Hello, we are going to be doing a 3D printing overview right here uh, using a Lulzbot Mini and printing an existing object. So we're not doing any designing uh, in this particular video. We're going to be using Cura by Lulzbot, which is a slicing software, and the website Thingiverse, which is uh, sort of a data bank of pre-existing designs. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing that you're going to have to do is make sure that you have Kira by Lulzbot installed on your laptop printer or on your laptop. Easiest way to do this is just Google Kira by Lulzbot and it is the first site that pops on up there. If you have uh, never installed Kira before, you can just go ahead and download it and install it. If you've previously installed a different version of Kira, you have to remove it first. If you don't remove it, it gets a little bit glitchy um, with the new stuff. So make sure that you follow the removal instructions to remove it first before you download it. Now that we have Kira installed, when you open it up, it's going to look exactly like this. Um, we have this set up for a Lulzbot Mini, which uh, I will take you through and show you that right there. But before we do that, let's go ahead and find something that we can slice up and print. So we are going to go to Thingiverse, which as you can see is Thingiverse.com. And Thingiverse is, like I said, just a data bank of items that have been previously designed. You can find just about everything right here. If we click on Explore, we can explore the things that are in there, and we have just about everything. There's battery boxes, there's figurines, there's toys. Let me type in skull right here, because I'm filming this right before Halloween, and we can see that there is a variety of skulls for us. Uh, I am going to click on one. Let me choose this low poly skull right here. Uh, sometimes the website runs a little bit slow, but this takes us right there. Shows you how many times people have liked it, collected it, comments, uh, 140 pictures of it being posted. Um, there's a whole bunch of information right here. But what we're going to be mostly concerned with is download all files. In order to get the file, to get the STL file, I'm going to click on this, and you can see it just pops up automatically as a zip. Open up the low poly zip. There we go. And I'm just going to drag this onto my desktop so my low poly skull is on my desktop. Now that I have that file on my desktop, I can go ahead, open up my Kira software, and I can load this on there. Open file. I've got to find my desktop, which is right here, and right there is the low poly skull. Open that on up, and it imports it right into the middle. Now this is where all the cool stuff with Kira gets going. So we have this loaded. Let's go through a few different settings right here, a few different views. If I click this right here, I am taking into an isometric view and I can zoom in and zoom out. I can go head on view, top view, left view, right view, even a bottom view, but I'm gonna click keep it isometric right there. Now when I click on the object, this is scale. I can make it larger by typing in 150 percent. There it goes a little bit larger. I can drag it to the left it goes like this right here, it'll say unable to slice because you've gotten off the build plate. I can drag it to the right. I can drag it forward. And I can even drag it up in the XYZ space or drag it down accordingly. Or 
One of the big things that I always have gotten into the habit though, once I have it positioned around where I want it, I always make sure to run through the views to make sure that it is indeed placed where I want it. So that is basic scaling. I just blew it up uh, a little bit more. I can rotate it by clicking rotate and turn this around however much you want. And again, I have full X, Y, Z capabilities so I can move it any which way. Uh, in here as well, you can mirror an object if you need to reproduce something. Um, you can click on it and multiply so we can make many different copies. We can select them, arrange them, clear, reset positions. There's a wide variety of settings, but for this right here, this is where we're going to stop. We have our model loaded right there. Now up here, we have um, the material that we're going to be printing on. If I click this drop down menu, I can choose what material I'm actually using. If I'm making this out of Ninja Flex, if I am using Color Fab, uh, me most of the time I use Color Fab, which is a PLA. You might also in a wood shop be using Woodfill Color Fab, but NG NGen for me. It will give you adhesion info, which is to use a glue stick on the build plate, and that's pretty much everything. Right here, you have a profile on the resolution that you're going to be doing. High detail is high resolution, standard is average, and high speed is a lower resolution. If I click on the high detail right here, you can see that we've got a print time of about 10 hours and 49 minutes. If I go ahead and change this to a high speed, it will re-slice everything, and it will tell us the new time, which is about half that, 5 hours and 13 minutes. But the resolution won't be nearly as good. It just depends on what you need to do. Print setup for this video, we're going to go with recommended. Custom will allow you to change all the settings, but really get into the custom once you get more accustomed to 3D printing. For right now, we're going to stay with recommended. The infill, this is how solid you want your object. 10% means that this, uh, the inside of the skull, would only be 10% solid. The rest of it would be 90% unsolid or air. If I move this up to 90%, that's saying that it will be almost solid filament. It'll be a much stronger print but it will use much more filament and you can see it increases the build time. Generally speaking, 20% fill is fine for standard prints. Generate support. This is important because in some of this you can see there would be overhangs. Always click generate support if it's anything with an overhang. Build plate adhesion. That is saying if it is going to print extra material around there to help it hold down. Generally on larger prints such as this you don't need any adhesion. But you can print a skirt, a brim, a raft, or none. Uh, if you're not sure what a skirt, brim, or raft are, just quickly Google it and it'll show you the different, uh, different types of adhesions. For this one, I am going to click none. Then finally, once you're said and done and all of this is through, we are going to save this to a file. So you're just going to click this and save it to the SD card that you've saved in there. Click save and it will generate a G code for you. At that point, you can take the SD card out, install it in your printer, and then print away. So this is the first video, basically how to download something from Thingiverse, how to load it into Cura, um, and how to change the settings to adjust things. Go ahead and stop this video, rewind and replay as many times as you need in order to get a very basic print going on the Lulzbot printer. Okay, good luck.